Um, I love everyone that's been up here. Uh, the gentleman that was having a problem or struggling with his green card, I had the exact same thing. And the moment before, I felt that absolute fear of not being able to stay in this country. I meditated, and I've been following you for years. And I decided to play a game, but I was really angry. So I did it from such a place of surrender. And I was just about to work with a producer that I wanted to work with for a long time. It was a Sunday night. I was also doing, um, I was doing daily pages and I was uh, working with someone and we were doing, um, now I'm blinking out on the, this course that we were doing every single day. And I didn't have time to do what I would normally do, which is completely dive into a million lawyers and then interview them all and then go with my gut, but eventually like always choose from a certain way, but then my true knowing and then my mind would get in the way. And I literally gave it up and I said, I know that the only thing I need to do is show up, enjoy every day. And then this thought came to me, Denise, take your blinders off when you're doing that. And that's what I did. I literally, I did that. I don't remember a lot about later that evening, but in the morning I woke up. I was supposed to be down in um, the Palisades to meet with her, but it wasn't until 11. And I decided to continue to do what I would normally do. And I went to a coffee shop that I don't normally do. And the impulse was to go there because I wasn't to do my morning pages alone. And I sat down and I started writing, um, reading what I was uh, doing, um, at writing. And this young Italian guy came up and he's like, hey, is anyone sitting here? And I said, no. And he says, um, may I sit? I said, yes. He says, would you like a coffee? And I said, no, thank you. And as he went away to get his coffee, I felt that nudge to put my book down and to, you know, just at least be in that moment and not have my blinders on. And I didn't come up here to tell you this whole story. But right. I, That's why we ask you up here. Okay. <laughs> For me, it's about the self-correcting along the way of all the mistakes I continue to make that aren't mistakes, but that are mistakes because I am judging myself. We'll say that in a different way. It's about being present in the moment to the dominance of the vibration so that your timing is good. Timing, yeah. Because it's about timing, isn't it? Always. And so when you think about it, we haven't said this today, but it's an important thing to say. Your inner being knows where you stand in terms of your physical beliefs, manifestations in relationship to the vortex version. And your inner being knows what your resistance is and where it is and knows how to guide you over and under and through it and around it. Providing I get out of my own way. Well, that's why we call it the path of least resistance. Hear those words. Your inner being knows what's in your way and how to guide you in a way that what's in your way won't be in your way. That's why we call it the path of least resistance. Who created the resistance? You did. Who created the path? You did. You asked for something. You threw resistance along the trail. But your inner being isn't asking you to have a resistance-free path. Your inner being says, we know where you want to be. We know what the conditions of the path are. We know where your roadblocks are. We know where your mental blocks are. If you'll just chill a little, we know how to guide you until the timing will burst into your experience again and again and again until after a little while you start not just knowing that it's going to turn out all right but enjoying the craziness and the twists and turns of the path don't you love that i love it i actually i love it so much so and then what happened you put your things down and so i put my things down and just before i forget because what i wanted to ask for some guidance for myself was um where my emotions stir up and how i get you know because it can be for me, I can manifest, I'm a great manifester, but if I'm angry, I can manifest like bad stuff just as fast. Energy moves fast and the degree of your emotion is the indicator of that. But get on with the story. So, so he left, he, when he came back, I, um, I, I put the book, well, I was reading, for, he said, oh, what are you reading? I put the book down. I started to tell him about it. And I had just come from Italy as well. So I asked him about, I said, you sound Italian. I asked him a little bit about that. And then there was this thought of, what, what are you doing here? And he said he was a producer. And in my mind, I felt like it was, again, um, inspired. My, inspired. And I said, this is an odd question, but I, I, he's, he was also a producer. And I said, do you happen to know a good immigration lawyer? And it's a long story about how, how it all came to be. Actually, it's not a long story, but ultimately, 
I followed that impulse and I called that person and I refused to let myself get in the way. I wanted to have a different experience and it did take a long time and I did have some, um, uh, it, they weren't full rejections, but I needed to kind of qualify a bit more, but I had the same visa. I'm pretty sure that this gentleman had, uh, but as a producer and I just kept playing with it. Every time I would go to fear, I would say, so far, I know you haven't brought me this far. I didn't make any plans to go anywhere. I just, I wanted to always, and I continued to, to interrupt myself if I had a thought, a negative thought that was spiraling. So if you had to assess the balance of your vibration through the awareness of your emotions, would you say that you were focused more often, more predominantly on your desire or on your concern about things? What was the dominant I think it was desire because anytime I had a concern, I knew enough about the law of attraction and the things that I had manifested that it was danger, danger, danger. So you made sure that it was your desire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was that important. It to me. mattered to you to tend to your vibration. So when something really matters, your emotions are stronger indicators. And when you let your emotions be the valuable and strong indicators that they can be, then you can incrementally guide yourself to stand in the place where circumstances unfold and impulses come. So we have a question for you. Would you rather that a sort of miracle happened and unbeknownst to you, doors open for you, or do you like being in on the process? I love being in on the process. Love it. You say the joy is in the journey, but you don't mean it. When we say the joy is in the journey, this is what we mean. It is so joyful to want something that I don't have and recognize that I'm not in a vibrational place of getting it and then do something about that and get it. That is true empowerment. And if you do it once or twice on things that don't even matter very much, then you can do it on anything even the things that matter very much, but you've just got to teach yourself what your own balance is. Yes. 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 And in, in those, the connecting of the dots, I have a circle of friends that keeps growing and they just kind of come in and go and, and remain, but they either practice Abraham or they practice it without really following, let's say Esther. You don't have to know the specifics of what we know, but this is required. You have to want to feel good and keep moving toward that. And you have to not be willing to give in to what doesn't feel good. You can't look at a world where so much doesn't feel good and then just join them because there's so many of them. They must be right. There's so many of them that don't feel good. They must be right. I'll go with them. No, they're not right. They just don't feel good. Where I find that I'm at now, I love all this evidence. I continue to connect the dots. I still have, for the most part, great days. But I have found, especially just over the holidays, being very reactive and very um, defensive. It brought us full circle to the conversation that we really wanted to have with all of you. Because we started out by saying that there's only attraction. And Esther acknowledging as she got something from someone that she didn't want. And then she reminded herself there's only attraction. So why am I getting this from this person? Why am I getting this? And the conclusion that she came to is, I have somehow made that person feel defensive, not with my words, oh, I've been walking on eggs, not with my words, but with my vibration. I wasn't coming from love, I wouldn't have admitted it. And not coming from love, they felt defensive, and then I reacted to their defensiveness. Then they reacted to my defensiveness. And now we're off to the races. We love the two words that you brought here right to this important place. I don't want to be in my physical body and be a reactor. I don't want to react. I want to get up in the morning in tune with who I am, care about being in tune with who I am, milk it, encourage it, do whatever it takes to stay in tune with who I am so that 
what I am presenting to the world is a vibration that when law of attraction reflects back to me what I'm reflecting out I won't feel defensive because I'm not getting something that I don't want what would make you more defensive than to want something and get something else you know what you assume you assume you're doing it to me because you other person or other situation or whatever I think I'm reacting to you but I'm not I'm reacting to what I'm evoking from you and the reason I'm evoking it from you is because I'm attracting it from you and the reason I'm attracting it from you is because I'm emitting it from me did you stay up with that yes you did good for you the only thing that you are ever reacting to is the results of your own vibrational output and if you keep finding yourself reacting then you might want to say "Ooh, maybe I could do something about the output that I'm outputting because you got complete control over that can you feel yourself beginning to be back in your own driver's seat and are you willing to let all of them off the hook and you want to say to someone the next person who is defending themselves to you do you want to say I didn't mean to make you defensive I'm sorry I was pretending I love you with my words but I don't think I'm really loving you <laughs> I think I was expecting negatively from you and now that I'm getting this from you I'm pretty sure because I've created this you didn't and they're gonna go man <laughs> whew, I don't feel a need to be defensive anymore because you just took away all my reason to feel defensive because you're not playing offense you're not projecting something that's attracting something from me this is big friends you're on the brink of getting it and now we've chewed it over really well best conversations ever in all of the universe today now that we've chewed it over your own personal life experiences are going to reflect back to you what you now understand and it just gets better and better I wanted to add just two things so that was like literally 12 hours of my allowing accepting and lining up to and just letting go of everything I, I met this person and she was indeed the lawyer that I used and later I didn't know who he was I never saw him again months later after uh, I was in the process with her and I, my memory is not serving me right now if it was six months later or a year later I remember launching that rocket of desire I would love to run into him again and thank him and then I just let it go and sure enough, I was driving along um, Pico one day and I had an impulse to go into Office Depot or Staples or whatever. And I pull in because I knew I needed something. And I parked in the parking lot and I couldn't remember what it was that I needed. And then I got distracted with texting for about 15 or 20 minutes. Put it away. I'm like, oh, I'm wasting time. Now I remember what I needed. I went in. I came back down. I'm walking to my car and a gentleman is walking this way. He just pulled in and walked over and it was him. And I literally <laughs> ran across the parking lot and said, you, you, you. And he looked at me. I said, you told me which lawyer. He says, oh, yes, I remember you. We stayed in contact through social media. And he. it was really funny how four years later, because he did not use her as a lawyer and didn't want to when he was doing he had an issue with his immigration years later he, he he we connected and I was able to provide some information from one of the other ones through one of my visas but it's just so interesting when you're open and you play that game and you follow the impulses and you trust however it's looking it's all looking so, out for you a lot of words here and you did a pretty good job of following this scenario and the thing that we want to call your attention to the most important thing that was presented here was I had an intention and I received an impulse that seemingly had nothing to do with that intention so I followed that impulse and the impulse wasn't even strong enough that I remembered what the impulse was because I couldn't even remember why I was over there I just knew that I'd come for a reason and then something else happened that caused me a time delay because the reason I was there was for the rendezvous that I asked for and the universe knew in this vast universe in which I live where he was where I was and what it was going to take to get us to rendezvous and it's true of all all things for all of you every time if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next